Hello. 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 I I believe uh, usually there is like five times more people on Facebook than in Zoom, so it's gonna be a good crowd. Yeah, <clears throat> usually we give viewers like both the option. Uh, it's just that in Zoom, um, the clarity is a lot better as compared to Facebook because you just stream yeah. directly, and uh, when you when you're doing it on via Facebook, then uh, usually they lower it down from 180p to uh, 720p. They're just trying to save money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't really blame them. It's free, money. you know. <laughs> I don't blame them, man. They're trying to save money, so. <laughs> so, guys, let me know when you're ready, so we can start. Yeah, we'll just the... wait for like a couple of minutes. Uh, usually, like Facebook takes about a good two to five minutes to to like let everyone know. They don't push. uh the no, all the notifications like all together yeah, they yeah. they kind of like queue it and then like they start sending it out like one by one by one by one so uh, sure. it's it's better to wait so because we're going to be talking about a lot of things uh it's better that people uh stay hooked right from from the very beginning uh so that they don't have to like watch from mid they won't get it and then we come back and they would like have to scroll back after the uh, after the webinar is over and then watch all over it uh, like once again <laughs> Sure, sure, no problem. We can wait a bit more. You guys, if you have just joined in, let us know where are you from. Drop in your high. Uh, put in your best favorite gifts, uh, because the one that has got the best gift in the comment today will be getting an exclusive piece, a PG T-shirt. We also, also after a huge demand, we have, uh, we have got the Sing Spider jacket. back in that <laughs> yeah. we will be giving away there's a huge demand sometimes i feel that there is a more demand for the jacket than the software <laughs> so we might I, we might just start selling those jackets yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, that, that was my idea <laughs> <laughs> but think we will do better with jackets <laughs> so Definitely. just tune in to singspider.com/merch and buy some merchandise <laughs> just give me the idea the voice over ready as well <laughs> Yeah. Hi Brussels Belgium Andrew from Brussels Belgium. All right guys so Hi, let's guys. begin. Uh hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode and uh, we are absolutely thrilled to to see everyone over here. I'm Odis Goenka the founder and CEO of Pitchdown and I'm so delighted to introduce you the man behind the brains behind Singspire Costa. Along with that we have oh. the CEO uh, Alexander. Um Costa people are seeing you here for the first time uh what do you want to say to them well uh first of all brains behind sync spider yeah i, I i'm um, in product owner team of sync spider since the beginning of the project so a couple of years ago when we started this and basically i was leading the uh development and doing of course some development myself but basically leading teams of developers uh who basically built the sync spider um I have some background or some like like for last 20 years or so I mean uh uh computer science generally first I was actually in science because I was uh, in a university here in Belgrade uh, teaching and uh, my PhD studies and then later I just switched to the industry and uh, started creating uh, applications and uh working on different types of projects and a couple of years ago when uh, Norbert started the Sync Spider I was there from the beginning because we have a, like a um uh, we had a good partnership for last 6 7 years I don't know uh and um so we started building Sync Spider and that's like a short about me who I am here so currently I just um, monitor and um trying to take care of everything but sometimes of course something uh passes me but that's we're all humans yeah so uh, generally um today we are here to present one of the features of the sync spider which is a uh, custom api uh 
this feature was built out of need to support different types of systems that SyncSpider cannot integrate directly with. Uh, in general, the, this first came from ERP providers and um, uh, some other um, bigger clients that actually have the, um, uh, their own system with all the data in some private network. And basically, SyncSpider could not access that network to get the data or to push the data. This is where the idea of building a custom API that any customer, any, any user of SyncSpider can customize for their needs uh, came. And um, uh, so we built it um, this way. Um, generally, in SyncSpider, there is a support for this, but SyncSpider does not build directly any of those API integrations. It's up to users to, to do that if they want, or if they need, they have some specific needs, they can tell us and then we can build that for them. Um, so it's a bit different from a standard uh, Magento the, or, or some other integration. Um, this is why basically this integration is in the specific section of SyncSpider. Uh, which is called custom templates. So I can share my screen so I can start with the presentation. Okay, guys? Sure, that would be great. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Um, uh, share. So I will share uh, full screen so you let me know if you see my screen correctly. Yes, that's good. Okay, so. Um, in SyncSpider, as you already know, so we have this section called custom templates. So basically this page is a custom templates integration page um, where uh, users can see all the public templates and all the private templates that uh, uh, they created for themselves or their company or their sub -companies. Uh, Norbert explained this during some previous um, webinars. As far as I know, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I will not go into the details about everything here. I will just focus on API integrations. And um, here in the list, okay, I, we have some. Um, uh, just just for your information, since I'm the admin of SyncSpider, I see a lot of things that you might not directly see. So I see a lot of integrations and things like that that you usually and or any other user uh, does not see uh, this way. So don't be alarmed with, with a lot of integrations here that you don't see in the app as well. Um, so uh, what we can do here, I will start from the scratch, basically create a new integration and then uh, add that integration into some demo task uh, use it as a source. So I will push data to SyncSpider and then to some other system and the other way around. So I will use other system to get data and then pull the data from SyncSpider with the API. Uh, for these purposes, since I don't have any other custom app or something like that, that will push or pull data, I will use Postman. And Postman is generally a tool to which I'm sure you're already familiar with if you're doing uh, uh, API calls uh, used for testing purposes and it can send and fetch data from different APIs. This way we will use it uh, for SyncSpider uh, right now. In, if I'm going too fast at any point, just I don't know who is monitoring chat, so please you can stop me and I can explain things better if, if that's fine with you. Sure, sure. Um, I'll interrupt you and, and uh, uh, any people just just give us questions in chat in Zoom and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. what I'm what I'm going to do is as uh, as we are done with this, I'm then going to start interacting with all the audiences and put up all the questions. Uh, so this mm -hmm. way we are like pretty streamlined and you would not break your flow either. Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay, so we'll start with uh, adding new integration template. I click on a plus button here. This button is available for anybody in SyncSpider. I'll, I can name it a uh, demo API, for example, module. I can name it anywhere I want. Uh, anyhow, anyhow, I want so I can uh, choose visibility as you know for uh, all the integrations. I can uh, specify my current company, some specific companies, or I 
if I want that, I can make it public or I can request it to be a public um, integration. I will, so because for this presentation, uh, it doesn't matter. So I'll just leave it like this. And of course here, choose the API integration. I can give it um, an image if I want. Uh, maybe I should. It would be interesting because I have some small image. And then I will go to the configure part. Custom API is basically built as uh, to, to support all the features from Sync Spider as any other module that was built uh, by us, by a Sync Spider team. So, for example, MailChimp or Active Campaign or Facebook or um, Magento 2 or Magento 1, or it doesn't matter, Amazon. So, any other integration. And for example, as you can uh, uh, use uh, Sync Spider to uh, work with Magento 2 and then fetch orders, products, um, I don't know what we have there, um, customers or some other things. So uh, the same way you can do that by building, building it yourself in the API module. So you can have different types of data that you would like to send or fetch from, from the module and from Sync Spider. And basically in the first screen, we create a data type. So uh, let me just move this. Uh, I can add new data type and give it a name. So what we want to synchronize, what we want to do with this API, what we want to send or what we want to get. And for example, I will create a customer data type. So I want to send customers from my local shop, whatever I have, or, or from my ERP, which is internal system, to some other, for example, CRM system. Add data type. And now when I get into the data type section, I can configure fields for this um, customer uh, data type. What are fields? Basically, these are attributes. Customer is an object. It has some attributes. So we can add as many attributes as we want here and structure them as we want. So for example, I can have first name, uh, last name, uh, one note here, names of fields can hold space. Uh, and I will explain later how you can, how to use that. Uh, but also you can, you know, create names on however you want. So let's call it this way. What is important is to remember or to use the same field name here together in uh, the API request that you will uh, have to send data and uh, fetch data. I'll explain that later. First name, last name, uh, email. Let's say that email is required. Um, and um, for, for the types, let's say address. And for field type, we have similar that we have in CSV integration or generally we support all basic data types. So it can be a bool field, date field, number, text. It can have options. It can be a collection. It can be a complex type and it can be a hierarchy. Uh, I'm sure Norbert explained uh, or somebody else explained that in previous webinars, what are all those fields? I guess you all know what Boolean, date, number, text and so on, options. Uh, we have two fields here that we don't have basically in CSV. CSV is just general table. Uh, here we have some more structural fields. And these two fields are collection and complex. Collection field is a collection of objects with certain attributes. So for example, if a user or a customer here has a collection of addresses, I can create a collection and then all the uh, fields for the specific uh, address. Uh, or I can, for example, if the customer has only one address, I can say it's a complex type so it's an object type, so I can specify its um, fields. Either way, for example, if I say that this customer uh, has ad only one address, I can add as many fields to this address as I want. So uh, I can have, for address, I can have to read, I can have uh, a zip code, uh, city, oops. 
and um, no, no, not field. I don't need this. I need subfield. Uh, country, for example. Of course, for any of those fields, I can also specify different options. What is not possible is to create a complex or collection inside a complex or collection. So generally, we support only one level of nest, nesting of the attributes. Why this? Uh, in SyncSpider, generally, we don't have any um, limitation of the amount of levels we could have in uh, some object. So we can have object inside object inside collection inside objects and so on. But what we found out uh, from customer perspective is that mapping this type of complex structures is really hard, even with only one level, uh, like we have it here for, for customers and even uh, hard to understand how mapping collection to collection or uh, simple type to collection or collection to simple type works uh, in SyncSpider. Um, mapping screen in SyncSpider is quite uh, powerful and generally map mapping is quite powerful because it allows you to actually map such things. Uh, but uh, the problem is that um, users sometimes, or most of the times from our experience, cannot comprehend uh, the uh, amount of data that is generated with this, these co complex uh, transformations. Because of that, we just limited it, everything to only one level. And uh, even in some situations, this is also complicated for customers. So we keep it like this so far. Um, so uh, I created a couple of fields. I will not bother creating more. Um, and when I click on done, I basically added my first uh, type customer. So I can add more types. I can now have uh, what we have here, customer, I can have product. I can have whatever I want. I'm building this API to my needs, to suit my needs, whatever my needs are. Uh, for the sake of this presentation, I'll just keep one so we don't waste time on creating uh, different types. Um, customers would be enough. Um, clicking on done, we basically create our demo, uh, at least I called it here demo um, API. I can find it here in uh, demo in the list, should find it here in the list. By default, when you create a template, it is not active because SyncSpider is assuming that you're still in um, uh, design mode of the template, of the template integration. Once you are ready with uh, this, you can just switch, click switch here and uh, it will switch to active status. Active status means that now this application or this template integration is available in SyncSpider app to be used as any other integration that we have in SyncSpider. And once it is active, if you go to the configuration part, uh, you will not be able to edit any, you see, I don't have edit or delete for this entity uh, data type and here everything is disabled so I cannot change things. We uh, added this because when you uh, have active integrations and you have tasks that run on that, if you want to change something, you will basically break all other tasks. So this is why changing of active uh, integrations is not possible. If you want to change integration, um, demo, uh, you can deactivate that, but you will have a warning that all the tasks that use this integration will be also deactivated and you will have to activate that manually. Again, for the same reasons that I just explained. Uh, okay, let's go to the, uh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, API integrations could also be created programmatically. So you don't have to go here and click here and there, click, 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 or do something like that. You can actually do that programmatically. And how it is done. We have a SyncSpider API module, um, Document, uh, documentation here on Apiary. And this documentation explains two parts of the uh, API module. One part is configuring mod the module. 
So basically doing all the things that I just did uh, manually, doing programmatically. So you can create module entities, you can retrieve, retrieve a single entity, do update, delete, and work with all the entities. So create complex types or whatever you want, basically. You have everything explained here with all the things that you need to know on how to actually push uh, uh, the data, how to create things or how to delete things uh, in your API module. Of course, this is only valid if you have rights to access this module. You cannot just do this to any other module. Um, in this documentation, you have explanation on the API keys needed for, for this and how this works basically, because you see we have, uh, we're working with API keys. Uh, in order to create template uh, through programmatically, you will need a user API key. So you are a user in your API section of user. You can, uh, I don't know why this is doing this that slow connection. I have generated my user token. With user token, I can create new token if I want, a demo. Um, when token is created, you can use this token, I'll click here to copy, uh, to call SyncSpider in a way that is explained in this section. You can use your token here. So you create things in SyncSpider with credentials that basically you have. So as a, your user account, this is why this is user token. Later, when you use the integration, you will have a different token for each uh, integration and I will show you that uh, soon. So if we now go to, where was I? Okay, let's go to the um, SyncSpider app part. So this is basically design part. And here, uh, I will go to this API demonstration project. I just created a empty project in my company. So I can start from scratch and show you everything. Uh, I can do two things. As you know, you can create your task and then inside the task, you can create new integration or you can go to integrations page here and create new integration. I have a couple of integrations here and of course, here we have integrations that are uh, in the module. As you can see here, we have a new integration uh, demo API module. Now this is available and this is only available for my company because this is how I created it here in, um, in template integration section. So I said that this should be available only for my company and this is available here. Um, what is also important, if you want, if you're an agency and you want to create um, API integrations for some of your sub companies, you can of course do that uh, if you, I would just edit any because it's the same. You can just edit your template and here select, um, oh, this is public, I cannot change the visibility. Okay, didn't see that. What's this like? Um, but basically, as I understand, uh, we can uh, choose to share this special integrations with our sub accounts or even publicly to other Inspire users. Yes, yes. But uh, if you want to share something publicly, it will not be available to all users directly. Uh, somebody from Inspire team will have to check that, validate that, and then make it public. Uh, why is this important? If you're creating an API connection to your system and you want to uh, allow all other users to, to use that, um, you just create everything, make it public, or you can request to make it public, but then uh, you can contact us and we will review your integration just to make sure that everything's fine. And we will make it public. Basically, we will publish that. Why is this important? Because once we publish things, it cannot be changed by you anymore because the public templates could not be edited by regular users, only SyncSpider admins. And um, this is important because of all the things that I just explained uh, previously about editing things and you know changing data structures or you know fields, things like that, where uh, if you change something, you can break something 
for other uh, users that have systems working with this API. So this is why a uh, user cannot change it anymore once it is public. Okay. Yes, and we also need to think about what we publish. We stand behind that, I guess. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, so I have here my demo API integration. I can create, uh, so now the, from this point on, everything works as this integration is just built into the Sync Spider. So it works the same, like for example, if I want to use uh, Plutio. So if I start that, I name integration, go to the configuration screen uh, and uh, enter some credentials or things I need to enter for this integration. For your API integration, you will have the same thing. So it behaves like any other integration. So if I go here, I can say integration name is uh, my uh, API integration. Next. What I will have here, uh, Sync Spider will automatically generate an API key. This API key you uh, use to connect to the integration directly, send data and pull data. This is the integration, specific integration key. You can add different keys. So you can, for example, I can give this to uh, my uh, dev team. And later on, I can just revoke the access if I want. So basically you can generate as many keys as you want here. And your integration will have to have at least one key in order to work, of course. Uh, this key is used to authorize uh, the API calls to your custom integration, to your custom API inside Sync Spider and to um, actually see if uh, this can be used for sending or fetching data. If the API is wrong or something like that, you will get 403 or 401, I forgot. Um, response from Sync Spider. Okay, let's add this integration. So I created it, it's named my API integration, just add it like that. And let's go to the project and I will create a new task. First, I will go with the um, what? First, I will go with the um, source. Uh, I will use this as a source, which means I will send uh, new uh, data to Sync Spider and then synchronize that to some other uh, system. I guess there are a lot of guys playing right now with the app uh, since we have this lag, I don't know what's going on, but if you do that, just you can just do that and follow, follow me together with, the, with this presentation. So for my source, I will use my API. Uh, and, uh, or maybe this is regarding uh, my internet connection. As in any other integration, we have this question, what do you want to get from source? And because I created only customer, customer is displayed here. If I did create other things, other uh, entities, data types, they, they would also be listed here. Like in any other integration, basically. Okay, I will use this as a source. And then for the uh, target, uh, for the sake of this presentation, I'll just something, use something simple that you can uh, easily see the results. I can use the same integration for, for destination, of course, but it makes no sense, I would say. Um, okay. Come on. Now, two, two, one. Maybe just refresh once. It happens sometimes. Strange. Um, I have my current different uh, integrations. I can create a new one, of course, but just to speed things up, I'll just use a regular CSV uh, integration. So I will 
push data to SyncSpider and then export that to a CSV file. Uh, next. Now, since I'm using my uh, custom API integration uh, as a source, um, when you push data to SyncSpider, you have here an option to keep the data for a certain amount, a certain period of time. And by default, it's one day. When no task used this data within a day, we will just delete the data, which means it's just not used. Uh, for, for any uh, any purpose. You can specify the amount here from, I think, up to 30 days. So you, you can, uh, why is this important? You can basically, with, with API integration, you can push data to SyncSpider, and then at some point use that data to send to destination. You don't need to send data immediately after you push the data. So it's something that you can uh, work yourself, how you want to, to work with that. But basically, whoever creates this uh, task flow right now uh, can uh, say for how long uh, the data should be kept on SyncSpider servers. Uh, next, what I have to, I have configured destination. Okay, let's add a couple of columns. So we have customers. Uh, so let's say name, uh, last name. I forgot what we had, email, uh, street, uh, city, phone, phone, um, country. That's enough, I would say. Um, so I configured my destination structure. Next, and now I'm on mapping screen and I can map things. So on left side, since we are mapping customer, uh, we can um, use any of the fields that we already uh, added. So uh, first name is name. Let me quickly map things. Uh, no first name, I need last name. Uh, email, email, email. Street, I will take from address. City. I don't have phone, so I will not enter anything. Or I can use constant value, but I guess that's not the point. Uh, and that's it. So I mapped things. Next. Uh, name this task uh, is uh, API, API push demo, let's call it that way. And what I can do here, uh, I'll activate the task. And here on, in trigger, I can say that these tasks should start on schedule. So we have this for any task basically, but I, I also have additional thing on event. And I can say when API call event happens, run the task. Which means when I push data from my other system, my private uh, network or ERP, whatever, uh, when I push data to SyncSpider and I say to SyncSpider, okay, now here is the data, then the, this task will automatically start and uh, will synchronize, use that data that was that's being pushed and synchronize that to destination. In my case here, it's CSV. So I can use that. I will do that so you can see the automatic flow uh, when we push data. Okay, finish. So we created a task. Uh, this new task one is probably the one that was at the beginning. Uh, and let's push some data. How we push data to SyncSpider. First of all, uh, I need the uh, API key. So I will go to uh, my integrations and here I will get the API key. I will copy this key and in my postman here, I will say authentication token, add this key that was um, generated by SyncSpider. You can read in documentation section how to use created uh, module in projects and tasks. Uh, in documentation here, you see how you uh, do the authentication part. 
How webhooks work, I will explain that later because webhooks are uh, when you have API as a destination. And uh, here we have example um, of if we had a product API. So if we had a product in, in our custom API, here's how it works. You just replace product. So for example, create. You just create, replace product with whatever your entity is, and you will have the same thing. It, it goes with the body as, as well. You replace the attributes here to the attributes that you have in your uh, entity, and you will uh, have uh, the, uh, uh, you can then create uh, data for your own um, entity. Uh, how we create data, we post to this specific URL. So AppSynspider.com API v1 custom API data and then and your entity name. To get your entity name, um, let's go to our and open up our uh, demo API module uh, configure. The entity name is what we have here. So it's customer. Keep in mind that if you name the entity with blank, with, with a space, so for example, product data, product blank data, you will have to use the same thing here. So it should be product blank or percent 20 data. It is, we, we suggest that you do not add empty uh, spaces, basically spaces in, in words here, but just to concatenate everything, to put, put everything together. Uh, but you can use, if you, even if you uh, did that way, so you have products, space, data, you can also push data to Syncspider. Just keep in mind that it is, it is um, uh, properly encoded. Um, so customer, the name is customer, I will go here and I already added that. So just name here, uh, keep in mind that it's capital C. So everything should be the same as in, uh, uh, as, as you defined. So um, the structure of the data should, must be the same. I already prepared some uh, data here, I think. Yeah, so we don't have to prepare, uh, do that uh, right now, but uh, let me check if I did that uh, the same as I did here, customer. So what we have here, first name, I will copy this first name so, and use it here. So it's first name the same as I have. Okay, last name last name, email, oops, where did I go? Where is posting? Here it is. Email, email. Keep in mind that email with capital E and email with lower E is not the same. So it's two different fields. So it has to be the same as you added in configuration part. Then we have address, which is a complex type, which means that address should be an object in JavaScript, in, in JSON. If you added here a collection, then you will have to have here a collection of objects with the structure the same as you entered here. Okay, so we have street, street, I named it here address, street. Of course, the only thing that you need, you, you do not need to follow is the order of columns. So I put street here first, I can put it like last, it doesn't matter. Uh, street, what we have, zip, zip added. Let's change this here to street. Uh, city and country, uh, city and country, country, country. So now if this JSON is correct and if all the fields correspond to specific fields in your uh, module, you can push data and SyncSpider will say, okay, I got the data and uh, that's it. If you have a lot of data, you can send data in batches. And if you do so, as explained in documentation, you can add additional uh, header, which is called is batch request and put it to one, to true. And if you specify that, uh, then SyncSpider will say, okay, I, I got the data, the data, but since this is a batch request, I will wait for more data to come. So I will not start, for example, we created a task where we have automatic 
um, task execution once the API gets the call. It will not happen if this is a batch request. Syncpy will just wait for you to send all the data and last request for this uh, should not have the header is batch request. And when Syncpy detects that, it will say, okay, I got all the data, now I will synchronize the data. Or not if uh, I don't have any task configured for that, of course. Keep in mind that the URL to push data is the same for any user, any task. But the thing here is that with a specific API key that we got generated once we created the instance of the integration, uh, SyncSpider will know which tasks to, to trigger if, uh, if needed, if there are, there are tasks, of course. Um, you can read through documentation about all the different things, and even here you have explanation of this batch request um, um, uh, header. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me just check. So what I will first do, I will on purpose create something that's not valid. For example, I will say here email address. Um, address it's, it's, other things are okay. And um, for authorization, I think I added correct uh, API. Keep in mind that you send the information as JSON, application slash JSON uh, content type. So other, other than that, than this, SyncSpider will just not Use, will say this is not this is a bad request you will get error 400 uh, response 400 uh, and of course keep in mind to to have the uh, JSON structured correctly okay let's send data so here okay so there are two things that we are we are validating first is mandatory fields and then uh, structure of fields. So for example, email address, we have here email. We don't have an email in this section. And then SyncSpider is complaining about this because, and only because here we said that email is mandatory. If it, it, would not, it was not mandatory, it will not check that. But even if we add, so for example, I will just keep email and see last name something. Send this. We should have invalid items response that something is not correct and uh, field last name something does not exist in source schema. So it's not correct. It, it will not store the date. So last name, let's keep it uh, as it should be. And even if we don't structure this, uh, for example, I can add uh, here uh, a, a comma which is not valid, JSON, and send, I will probably get error 400. Yes, bad request. So you will have the error code here. Yeah, but everything is set in the documentation, how they can follow up with this problem, of course, right? Of yeah. course, of course. Okay, let's have correct date and send this. So what, what we have here, I'll go back to the uh, my task, API push demo, and uh, let's push data. So uh, as you remember, I configured this task to start automatically when the data is received. So we'll see if this happens. It should happen. Um, okay, let's send data. I'm sending two uh, items in this case, two customers. And I should have response 200 and empty body if everything went well. Let's go here. I will refresh this page, API push demo. And, oh, it's finished quickly. As you saw, there was a short uh, here, a, um, a progress bar, but let's go to the execution log. And we have some uh, data. Let's see the last one, the one that we sent to I to correct items. Um, and we see here that two items were sent, transferred to CSV, CSV was generated, and then it finished. Let me get the CSV so we can see uh, what is in destination CSV file. So we got our mappings correctly. 
Yes. For city, I said yes. And let me just check if I did that. Uh, yeah, city, yeah, city, city second. Okay, so this is how we transfer data from source to destination using the API. So we just push, push the data. And basically when you now create your own integration, your own system, you can just push the data. Keep in mind to have batch request flag on or off if you want to send batch data and uh, since Python will get the data and then if there are tasks that are listening to this event, it will automatically start the data. If there are no tasks that are listening to the event, you can even uh, start task automatically, um, that project, and you can start the task and system will try to read the data. And if there are some data, it will, uh, if there are some data, it will, um, Take the data and transfer that to the send that to destination. In this case, we don't have anything, so we didn't send additional data. So nothing is here. So this is why the task finished quickly. Um, even if you send the data in proper format, but some of the item, uh, items are not valid, you will probably have, as you can see here, uh, you will probably have some executions and say, okay, we sent two items, one was valid, one was invalid, and then it basically sent the, the valid item to destination. Um, in, in our case, uh, the mandatory item was uh, not uh, set. Let's say this one, again, one. So uh, if there are more than one items, since part will basically try to send whatever, uh, whatever is valid. If none of the things are valid, none of the uh, items are valid, of course, it will not send anything. Okay, now let's use this API for the destination. Let's see how it is when somebody else generates data and wants to push the data through SyncSpider to some other system. Let's create a new task uh, for source. Now I will use just regular CSV for example, or I can use Amazon and get orders from Amazon, for example. Uh, next. For destination, I will use custom API. And it will be Amazon, oh, not Amazon, customer. Next. So basically now the flow is as we have in any other system. So in any other integration for custom CSV, you can upload file and uh, in task one, let's say this one, this is what I was, what was generated. So I will use that one. Uh, specify my source configuration, in this case, custom CSV. Uh, next. Okay, filter, we will take all the data, nothing should be filtered. And now on mapping screen, now on source, I have my custom CSV. On destination, I have my API and the structure is basically the same as we have in our uh, in our module here. Let's map it. Email. Okay. First name is name. I will not map last name. Street. Map that. Map zip. Zip I don't have. Map country. And that's it. I I can map other things, but they're not relevant. But on purpose, I don't want to map everything so you can see what we have in destination. Uh, next. Now, this is important part for the custom API. Uh, again, we have data expiry time. When SyncSpider uh, gets the data from source and prepares that for your API's destination, it will keep the, the data for a certain amount of time, certain period of time, and this is what you can specify here, the same as for source. But we have additional things here, and these are webhooks. Uh, custom API integration allows um, a user to specify a webhook URL, which should be notified once the data or the task completes successfully and the data is generated. This webhook, again, is explained here in documentation what you need to enter, how token should be used, and what type of signature uh, in the token should be used. So uh, in, in hook should be used. And how the payload looks like. 
So this is the payload that you uh, get, for example, example payload uh, for the execution. So webhook will not contain data. Webhook will be just a notification for your system uh, to that there is a data and that the task completed successfully. And then you can now you can fetch data. You're fetching data. You can you have explanations here on how to retrieve the data. So you basically do a GET request to the same endpoint. So the base URL is the same, and then your entity name. And you have some parameters that you can specify. You can specify the execution ID. This is what you got in uh, here. Uh, you have the destination ID. Why is this important? Uh, as you know, Sync Spider, Sync Spider allows um, that you have one source and you have several destinations. So for example, uh, I have a new Facebook lead and I can send that lead to my CRM system and also send to MailChimp as a new subscriber. So in one test flow, I can have one source and a couple of destinations. And even if in, in case you have, in, in the, because of this, you can have multiple destinations, mul multiple targets, which are of the same type of, the, of your API, but you configure that differently for some reason. This is why we have this optional parameter destination ID. You don't need to worry much about it because I guess in most, system, most cases, this will not be used, but still you can use it. Um, so in Webhook, you have your uh, execution ID, so you can do whatever you want. So you can pull data for this specific execution. Uh, and you have additional created before, created after. So additional parameters for you to pull the data. If you do not specify any of these, you will get all the data that SyncSpider collected for this integration, for in our case, custom or demo uh, API integration, how we call that. So uh, let's go back here. Now, of course, webhooks are not mandatory. You can leave this empty and nothing will uh, be generated. But we have, if we, you generate webhook, if you put the webhook URL here, and for example, let's put something that I will delete. Uh, we can generate the token. This is important because then you will know that this webhook came directly for a specific task for specific uh, from, from SyncSpider and not by some other system. And then you can select how you want to uh, use this token, whether to just send it as a simple header or to uh, use it as a key for HMAC uh, Hex Digest on the body. And you can find the information about that here in documentation, how to use one or uh, first or, or the second token uh, uh, usage. I will just say I don't need webhooks. So this will be removed. And finally, to, to close this task, um, demo API push data. I hope I create, I named the other one pull data, but it doesn't matter. Because trigger depends on a source integration, source integration here is only a CSV, custom CSV, so we don't have anything other than schedule and it's not even important. Let's activate this and finish with this um, task. So, okay, demo API push data. This is the task that I want. Now I will run the task. Use the same CSV I uploaded. Of course, if CSV is, uh, has different uh, storage, if it is like on some FTP or uh, Google Drive or whatever, uh, it will pull data from there and uh, transfer data from source destination. I've prepared uh, here also the GET request for SyncSpider. And we have, so the URL is like I said, always this as a base URL and then the name of your entity of your data type. In header, um, let me use correct token. So this is the token again, the same that I got from uh, um, my integration. And that's it, nothing else should be sent because this is just a get request with, with authorization token. Uh, let me see the task finished, exported two items. So if I fetch data now, 
I should get two items. So here it is data, one item, the first item, the second item. So, and this is uh, in a structure that follows the integration, but with only the mapped fields. So the fields that we got from, from source. We have some additional math information here regarding the total number, the count uh, of current total is the total number of items in um, storage storage. Uh, count is the number of items in this request. And uh, maximum, we allow 100 items per page. So you need to do a pagina pagination on your side to get all the data that you want. But when you do a first request, you will get a total number of data of items so you can create pagination the way you want. Uh, and that's basically it now in... Um, Okay, back to the uh, tasks. We have those two tasks. Now we can, you know, push and pull data the way we want in a structure that we defined in a custom API module. And um, that's about it. You can read the documentation here. I don't know how you will should um, uh, give people the documentation. Basically, it's inspired.docs.api.io, but uh, maybe we can distribute this somehow. Yes, well, certainly we'll, we'll, we'll work on that and the following day. Still, till then, you can guys just ask support, they'll give you the direct link. Oh, basically, what we will do, we will just update the uh, help files. No, in, in integration, when you, when you open integration here, I will put this is what I should have done before but it doesn't matter. Uh, here, next, you will have a link here to the documentation. So you can so you can click here and then it will lead you to the documentation how to create and uh, work with the API. That would be the easiest way. But anyhow, until we do that, you can contact our support and uh, they will uh, give you information how to use this. Fantastic. Cool. So, uh, Kosha, are you ready with uh, like hundreds and thousands of questions that are being asked? <laughs> Uh, group them. <laughs> All right, let's dig in. I'm just kidding. So, yeah, shoot. So the very first question is from Danny. He's asking, um, for individual plan, if I have uh, 1,100 leads to Zap to Gmail and Excel, does it mean my total task is at uh, 2,200? Uh, which also means that that the tool stops working at 1,000 um, 1,000 total task. I guess this is not related to API, right? This is general since by the question. Yeah, uh, so we have a bunch me. of questions. So yeah, yeah, okay. maybe yeah, Alex yeah. can, uh, can answer. Well, that. I can explain, but yeah. let's let Alex do that. Let yeah. let, uh, let let Costa then uh, focus on API questions. I'll I'll try and try to answer all the others. So mm -hmm. if I understand, so uh, no, nothing will be stopped automatically. We of course will give you some kind of a warning that you are reaching your limit, and give you an option to upgrade. But uh, sorry, I didn't understand that the first part of the question. Uh, so, uh, should I just repeat the question? Uh, yes, please. Okay, so the question is, um, for the individual plan, if uh, if the person has got 1,100 leads to Zap to Gmail and Excel, so that means um, if the leads are flowing from, uh, from like, uh, like flowing to Gmail and Excel, does that mean it's a total of 2,200 tasks? No, no, that doesn't mean that this, these are uh, these are operation right or how many items we have transferred. So that is not related to transfer. But I also uh, welcome people to visit the fax section, or FAQ section, sorry, on even on the cell page of uh, PitchGround, and we also have fax in our in our help, help files. It's and it's very well explained there. <clears throat> sorry, guys. So the next question is for uh, for Costa. It's from Joseph. Um, he's asking, what do you do if you need to manipulate data between steps, such as uh, con concatenation, uh, splitting, uh, calculation, capitalization, etc.? If you uh, have uh, API integration as a source integration, we assume that you prepare the data in a way you want. So we don't have these additional attributes, additional manipulations, let's say, for the data as we have for just 
regular CSV. Um, we had this basically request before to add that, so we might add that in the future. Uh, so user can, you know, fetch data from API and then do additional manipulation, like for example, concatenate first name and last name into a full name or uh, street and street number into address or something like that. This is kind of a common thing. So we are considering adding that to basically any module so user can change the structure of the data on the fly in any module or in any task. So this is something that we might add uh, in the future. Currently, Fantastic. it's not available. Fantastic. Joseph, just a, a quick suggestion. If you have any feature request, you can go to, uh, or you can go to sixpire.com, uh, dot, uh, feedback.com and you can put up your request over there. And based on the upvotes, uh, the ones that are uh, voted the highest right now, those are the features that's been considered. So if many of the other users are requesting for the exact same, uh, feature set, then this will give, be given a much higher priority. So moving on to the next question is from uh, Rene. Um, to Costa once again, do you have a sample of an existing app API integration available uh, in the documentation example, uh, LEM list to LEM list of Pluto? Uh, we have LEM list as an integration directly. So it's not available in the, as a custom API. And in our documentation here, we have example of the uh, module with custom entity. Uh, I think we added here some examples, for example, product, and then how it works and how uh, you can uh, specify things. So basically you can use the documentation. We try to be as detailed as possible in this documentation and uh, which would uh, help you with building your own API. So just think of the API as a general structure you don't need to know how it works behind. You just need to build a structure and then send the same structure of data to SyncSpider or expect the same structure of data from SyncSpider. And that's about it. So it's really user-friendly in that way. So, so you can, you know, just by clicking at things or if you are more uh, tech savvy and you know how to do this uh, uh, through the API calls, you can use the documentation here to do that with your, uh, uh, by pushing data through API. So right. basically the documentation should be quite explanatory for everything. If you find, of course, some things, let us know and we will explain that better. Fantastic. So there's another question, uh, Costa, for you. Uh, so let's assume that one of the SaaS founders are, are working on an integration uh, and want to uh, make the app go live public, just like Zapier inside Thingspire then what is the process? Do they reach out to you? There is, is there a form or anything that they need to submit? No, uh, when you go here to the, um, let's just go to the list of integrations. Uh, when you go here to the list of integrations and uh, you have your, uh, your uh, for example, here, uh, you see that this is uh, this integration, somebody created this integration and wanted to make it public. Uh, it has this pending flag and me, let me just see if I have here, um, no way. Uh, since I'm the admin, I have an option to publish this and make it public. So if you have these kind of things, you can just send the email to our support and say, I built in API integration or even CSP integration. And I want this to make it, I, I want to make it public. This is the name of the integration and we will do the review, make it public and let you know that it is live now and you can use that in, uh, not you, but anybody can use that in SyncSpider. Before we make it public, you can use that in your own companies. So when you, when, when for example, this status here, like public pending, this means that it waits for us to do the public uh, publish uh, procedure, but you can use this in any area of your companies because you created that. Fantastic. I actually have uh, an interesting question myself this time, um, mm -hmm. and this can be uh, this can be beneficial for a lot of people. So let's assume that uh, I'm I'm a web developer and I just want to push an integration, a custom integration uh, for some of the bunch of clients, right? Only, 
and um, can I charge them on monthly basis for those integrations? Well, this is uh, this is not made. Uh, we we don't function that like that. Mm -hmm. We had some similar requests, so this is under consideration. But the technical part behind of it and everything is uh, not not as close in the future. But this is something that is interesting for us for for sure. Okay, so it's still under consideration. It's it's not like up here, no. Yeah, it's not planned. Okay, it's, okay, it's in backlog. Let's call it that way. Yeah. Okay, fin fantastic. All right. Uh, meanwhile, guys, if you have any uh, API related questions, Costa is here. He can directly answer those, answer those questions. Uh, keeping uh, the generic questions aside, uh, we want to make sure that uh, all those questions for you are completely answered. So if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to answer each one of those questions for you guys. Meanwhile, just a moment. So uh, this, this question is for you, um, Alexander. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, someone is asking that um, when, when, uh, what is the basic, again, this, this question is being asked many times. So I think we can cover it once again. Uh, what is, what yeah, is sure. again the basic uh, difference between the integrations, task flow, task run and operations? Well, uh, uh, again, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tell the advice to the people just to visit FAQ question and FAQ section. And of course, I'm going to answer that. So task is any, any task that you create. So basically, um, uh, you create a task uh, to send some leads from Facebook to CRM to CSVs. This is all one task. Task run is not a task run is a number of times how much you want to run one task so for example that that can that can be once per day that can be 12 times per day that can be uh, event based so depending on how many leads you're getting that that amount of time the task will be run but usually people just make it to run twice uh, twice uh, every two hours once so that's what falls 12 times a day, but that's so dependent on the needs and uh, or number of operations or uh, so this is something totally different. This is how many data are we uh, moving in that task. So for example, if you have uh, 10 products that you're moving and 10 leads, this is in one task total of 20 different operations. And we had a we have a crazy limit of 1 million operations for our highest plan. So I did think you're covered. Fantastic. So, so let me put it this way directly here in uh, Sync Spider. When you go to the integrations page, you will see all your current integrations. So I have three CSV integrations. I have an IT scope, Amazon, Magento 2, Invisible Link, and my custom API integration. The total of this is eight integrations. I can use any of these integrations in both as a source or as a target in a single task. So this is the total number of integrations. It doesn't mean I have uh, three, um, uh, we don't count uh, CSV as one integration. If you have three different CSV integrations, then it's a three. Uh, then if you go to the specific, uh, so for example, here in my demo company, uh, these are all the tasks that I have in my company. Task is a flow that sends data from A to B, C, or D. And in, for example, currently I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tasks, a total of eight tasks. I can have 15 integrations, but only one task if I build it that way. It's about basically how I want to do that. And now as we had uh, here for API push demo, I can go to the log and see all the execution history of the task. These are task runs or task flows. Uh, task runs or, um, Alex, how do you put that in? Uh, I, I think we call them task runs. Task runs. So for a yeah. single task, we had four runs. Or trigger tasks. Sorry, we just changed the wording. Yes. Okay. So the task is triggered four, time, four times and it transferred data from A to B four times. So a single task is triggered four times. If you, for example, create a schedule, 
for this task and say, okay, every hour do this, then in a day you will have 24 executions, 24 triggers for the same task. And then in the lowest level, so it goes like integration and then we have tasks and then we have executions or flows or triggers uh, for a single task. And then when you go into a specific integration here, you will see how many items, okay, we didn't have any here. Uh, no, wrong button, sorry. Um, this one. We have that we exported total of two items. So these are operations. So we got two items from source, transform that into the destination and send to destination. These are operations. Okay. I think, I think it's quite clear now. All right, fantastic. Uh, so there is one question uh, from uh, for you, Kosa. Uh, it's related mm -hmm. to API once again. Uh, he's saying, first of all, thank you so much for the presentation. So just to make sure if I understood everything right, I can send a webhook from another system. I create a custom API to catch that data and can use it in Sync Spider. Mm, I didn't follow correctly. So if you have, uh, so let, let's go again back to, to um, this task where we have webhooks and I will explain webhooks again. So webhooks work when you have a uh, API integration as destination. And webhooks are a means of notifying external system that one task execution completed and there, there is some data in Sync Spider waiting to be collected. And if we go to the, okay, next, come on, next, next. Okay, I'm clicking too fast, so the module is complaining. Oh no, back. So when we are, when, when my API integration is destination and I have this configuration step of the destination, I can specify which URL should be notified once the test completes successfully. And when there is data to be collected. And I can specify here a, a webhook for HTTPS, uh, my company, dot com slash notification api you know i can put whatever i want basically here uh, and then sync spider once the web the the task completes and we have data we will send notification to this api in a specific format that we explained uh, explained here, you will basically have a JSON with this data that a specific execution finished, that it was an execution for a specific data type. In our example, it was a customer and the time of the, uh, when the data was collected. And we will also send in a header, this specific token. So you can say, okay, whoever controls this URL can say, okay, I got, I got a webhook, I got a, a post uh, from a certain system. Let's see if this is a Sync Spider uh, call. You can verify this hook by, for example, checking whether in header you have X Sync Spider token and whether this is exactly this token here. And if so, you'd now know that uh, you had a notification from Sync Spider, and then you can make a call to Sync Spider and fetch the data, as we explained it here, how to retrieve the data uh, for any uh, data uh, entity name, for any entity, for any data type. Okay? Cool. I hope it was more clear now. Fantastic, guys. If you have any other API related questions, please let us know. Uh, I know it can be a little technical, but this is something that a lot of users requested for, especially with regards to a lot more advanced integrations. So we'll be doing, uh, we'll be covering a lot more sessions on this, especially on the developer uh, developers end. I will try and, and push as many videos as possible so that it's, it makes it a lot more easier for you to, if you are looking to do your own custom integration, 
you can always hire your own dev and work on your own app and you can integrate yourself so those are the things that will be pushing for but the documentation is out there um i think um, uh, we'll will post a documentation link after the webinar is over but meanwhile if you have if you guys have any other questions uh, please do let us know so there's one more question from jerick is asking um some of the integrations are not uh, fully developed a uh, big marker for an example can i have a, a cop can i have a way to copy big marker to my template and modify so jerick uh, you need to understand that uh, it all comes down to the uh, it comes down to what the other apps can do and provide you with the api so if they don't allow you to make any of those changes with this api then it's impossible for 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 any platform to execute anything so if you want a specific task to be executed then you got to reach out to the developers of that particular uh, software request them to release the api once that api has been uh, released by them then you can reach out to singspire again and then ask them to push an update to that existing integration this is the only way um, the updates can be automated by singspire because singspire is a middle way that can help you automate and transfer your data from one end to the other and that's that's the core goal of singspire and something that doesn't have an api it cannot be executed and there is no way to execute it so just reach out to those developers and and push them to release those apis once they do that uh, it it it's not going to take too long to to push an upgrade to an existing integration cool uh, do we have some questions on facebook or uh, and how much time do we have till the bonus is ended you did you know the best yeah so we'll take the last one um it's from joseph he's asking what about the uh, what what about uh, the reverse with webhooks can i post a sync spider endpoints if that is the only way uh, i i can integrate post a Oh, I don't understand. I think can this is you... Joseph. Can you can you please write down your entire question? Uh, because since there's a lot of discussion going on, uh, so if if you are asking question, uh, just about a specific subject without uh, without writing in detail, it gets a little difficult for us to catch up with your question. So if you can just write down your entire question, we'll be happy to, happy to take that question quickly. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just jump on to one more. Um, So Jerick is saying there are API available in Big Marker, however, not uh, not yet implemented in Singspire. So Jerick, all you have to do is just go to Singspire dot be of if it dot com and just post an uh, integration I, request over there. That's all you got to do. And based on the highest upvotes, those integrations will be pushed. So you just got to wait. All the integration will be eventually pushed, but the ones that have got the highest votes. will will be pushed um as the top as priority uh, i can explain one thing I, i i think i understand what 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 is the question here mm -hmm. um i think we had requests from other users or other clients as well so they have an api somewhere and can we specify in sync spider a way to actually call that custom api get the data or push data to that custom api um basically for example we can you, you can imagine that there is a shopify for example and we created a shopify integration by contacting shopify api pulling and pushing data and the question was whether can use whether users can do that their own so for example i have my own api system somewhere and then create integration to that system and publish that to sync spider and uh so this is different from the api we explained here uh, a custom api here is custom sync spider api inside sync spider not in external system uh and the, the the requirement is to actually create something in sync spider to contact external api get the data or push the data uh, we were thinking about that and uh, this is not as simple as it sounds and uh, we might add some things there something in between that is webhooks integration that we actually want to uh publish soon i think that will allow users to not create a specific uh api integration like we did here so we went through where was it so we went through the uh custom if templates I... created and so on but basically 
webhook integration would be let's receive anything from any system and then in specific task specify the structure of the data if i may just clarify i think that uh, why why people are confused so we we are having a webinar here on apis uh, on api but also and the webinar title that, that was mentioned and webhooks so web webhooks and a webhook sorry guys and api are just part of this custom api connection you can create but uh, i think that a lot of people are also asking for webhooks integration that we are going to just Publish and we're going to have a totally different webinar on it. So web yes. integration is totally different thing. Some other value that we are bringing to you, and here in this custom integration, uh, a custom sorry custom API you can use. Webhook is just a one one of the how, how do you call that Costa? One of the uh, things you can add with your custom API to to make it work better or as you want it to work. It's more flexible custom API. It basically allows you to create an API inside Simspider, but without having to specify all the data that we just did. It's yeah. You will push data differently. So it's similar to the API, but but we will explain that once it is live. Re rest assured, guys, we'll be doing videos for it. So rest assured, anytime you comes in, we'll be we'll be doing an aggressive video. So that you can follow and and we'll have Costa on on that webinar as well, so that you can follow along, learn from it, and execute and and get going. So we'll take this one last two last questions, which is uh, again um, with regards to API. There's one question for you, Costa. If if there is any help that is required with the API integration uh, with Singspider from from a from a company, SaaS company, for an example, um, is there any way that, um, uh, the team of Singspider can help them out? Um, yes, of course. Okay, so just reach out to their support and they'll be more than happy to help you get started. So we'll take this one last question from Joseph. He's asking in Flexi, we have our dynamic endpoints. It is a URL on Flexi that I can post to and then Flexi can read the data that come out from that endpoint and then begin the flow. Is it possible to make a dynamic endpoint in Sync Spider? This is what I just explained. This is not possible because then currently not possible. This is a request the, we had before. It was not so commonly asked for, but it is a request. So, and Joseph posted the documentation on this Flexi system. So uh, we might include this in the future. Uh, like I said, it's not as simple as uh, just adding endpoints and things like that to push and pull data. Um, especially with the um, the main problem is um, the structure of data, which I explained at the beginning. Usually, uh, APIs are built properly in a very, very structured way, and generally, it cannot be mapped to anything else. Uh, so it needs to be transformed somehow in order to make it available for general listing spider so that can, it can be mapped to some other system. Imagine you have really structured API, maybe this Flexi is, maybe not, I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. And then user wants to map that to Magento, for example. Uh, because in Sync Spider you can map anything to anything. It's up to user what he wants to do with, with the data. It would be quite complicated to do that. So we will we would have to add more and more restrictions on this. This is why this is also not pushed yet and not basically considered yet or, or, or doing it's in the backlog. We had this request before, so we might add it later. Um, if we do that, of course, we will let you know. So awesome. currently it is not available. Awesome. All right. So this is going to be coming very soon, Joseph. So guys, uh, with that, I, I don't see any more API related questions or webhook related questions. So uh, we're going to be wrapping up this webinar, but before that, please make sure that you check out the Syncspire page on PitchGround. Uh, the bonuses are live for only next 32 minutes and 25 seconds exactly. After that, any purchase made after that, I'm sorry, but we would not be able to give you the bonuses. Uh, you can still make the purchases as, as the regular uh, purchases uh, on PitchGround uh, as a lifetime deal, but the, the 72 hour bonus would be off and we would not be able to do anything about it. Uh, our brand new PayPal API is live now, so you can make the purchase. 
um, you can you can simply go ahead and click on PayPal and and just make your regular checkout like you do. Uh, it works flawlessly. Uh, we have we have already tested and we can see uh, people already making the purchases already. Once again, you have about thirty one minute left, so make sure that if you are on the fence, get it. And at the same time, you have sixty days. And we have and by the way, in this three days alone, we have pushed three new integrations. So the, the, the entire ThingSpider team is here to, to rapidly push every single of your feature requests so that you can get going, uh, you can get started with every single of, of those integrations and every flow that you want to integrate and, and, and enjoy ThingSpider. And, and also at the same time, please keep posting your feedbacks. It's extremely valuable. We've already received hundreds and thousands of uh, feedbacks privately that we have been working on. This is apart from the feedback, we are getting so many amazing unique requests from users and the team is constantly working very hard to deliver every one of those requests. Also, we have uh, one more special opportunity for you guys where uh, if you guys are looking for a split payment option, then just send an email to us at support at the rate uh, pitchdown.com uh, with the subject line uh, split payment and we'll, we'll send you the instruction how you can get started and even if you are, if, if even if you need some help, then there is a split option payment option available for you where you can pay in up to three months very easily uh, without paying anything extra. So, guys, thank you so much uh, for for sticking around and thank you so much for sharing all the love uh, that you have shown towards Inspire towards Pitchground. It's incredible how we are really growing stronger and stronger as a community. Your feedback means everything to us, so please keep them coming in. That is the only way that can help us build amazing software, that can help us get amazing software companies, that can help us build amazing integration so that we can focus upon syncing the data uh, from one end to the other end, which is which is the goal. And, and at the same time, we'll be pushing a lot of further updates and we'll be making and posting a lot of videos and webinars that's going to be constantly, frequently coming up. So stay tuned with us. Again, 30 minutes left. So thank you so much, guys. Um, Kostra, Alexander, before we wrap up, you want to say anything to the to the pitch grounders? Well, from my side, thank you for well for all the support and uh, for all the feedback that we got. Thank you for everybody who, who was watching this and who will watch this in the future. And of course, we we'll strive to build a great product here. We really, the team is working really hard to do things. Please don't mind if you see some glitches here and there, everything will be uh, polished. But now since uh, there is a lot of requests uh, and a lot of uh, input from uh, this uh, pitch ground, uh, uh, generally the, the last three days and the things we are doing right now, we're trying to just make everybody happy. And, uh, but please share all your thoughts and, and give us feedback without you guys, of course, we will not need to build basically anything and did you, <laughs> we will be the, build a great product so uh this is from my side thank you again i also want to thank as costa did and uh, thanks for all the feedbacks and as as costa said uh without you we wouldn't be here uh, the thing, uh, what, what we are going through now because previously we had just big clients they're working on some specific things uh, uh, and they perhaps were much more easier to handle because they're so big and, uh, and but a few of them, not, not as few, but right now we have so many new customers, so many new, new, new feedbacks that it's just, just awesome. And as you had said, uh, PitchCraft community is great. I really love you guys. Uh, hope to, hope to, hope to hang out with you for another, I don't know how long is deals going to be there, but this bonus is as you just says, 30 more minutes. So perhaps good time to grab it. If not, again, uh, even without bonuses, I'm sure we are giving a lot of value. And if you think where we're going to be in one year, this is going to be probably one of your best investments, not just in a piece of software, but in your business things with you, what you can do with Sinspider. Uh, Sinspider is here to help you make more money. So, uh, 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 take a chance, not take a chance, uh, uh, there's no chances. Just, just go for it. All right. Thank you so much, guys, and everyone. Enjoy your upcoming weekend. Thanks, Yurit. Bye. Bye, bye, bye guys. Bye.